This oil painting begins with a very careful preliminary drawing that I had done previously just using raw umber diluted with spike lavender. And so now what you're seeing in the footage is going to be uh, bits and pieces of how I put this painting together. So I started off, as you saw there, with the background colors. Uh, very nice and bright, bold colors. The reason being is that this is a sunset painting, so to have a sunset you want to have some cool colors reflecting some warm colors. So this painting is being created in a kind of a, a mix between classical sensibility and impressionist color. To combine the two, the very important ingredient is drawing. So it's important that the drawing foundation is as prevalent as possible. So now that I'm going in with the background tones, what I'm looking for is how much light can I get out of these colors. Now for the uh, list of colors that I'm using, please see the description box of this video. Now since this is an abbreviated uh, video, I'm going to be telling you bits and pieces of how this painting was put together, but all in all, this painting took about two weeks to complete and several sittings. Uh, so several sittings in two weeks. It is on the smaller end, being a 12 by 16 inch, but yet still uh, large enough for me to be able to capture all the detail that I captured in this painting. A big part in the process that you're seeing now is actually a transition into smaller brushes right away. So remember smaller brushes allow you to have more control but the big disadvantage is that you may end up getting into too many details too quickly. However, it does have an advantage in a smaller painting if you are trying to work in a more detailed fashion. So that being said, I'm using a size 5 round brush from the Silver Brush brand. It just tends to be my favorite uh, sable brush, uh, size 5 around from silver brush brand. Again, uh, the information to that is in the description box of, of this video. So now you've seen, you've seen some of the planes that have been put in for the face, kind of piece by piece, uh, looking for how the values fit in relation to one another. It's all about comparison trying to get the values to work in comparison to one another. The strategy is to get the orangey glow around the hair, contrasting with those kind of cool colors in the background and the uh, bright warm colors. So remember, it's not just about contrast with the values anymore. It's more about contrast with the values and the uh, colors in relation to one another. So you see now we moved from the face, trying to get the features of the face and the ear and the hair, now to the hand, moving one little section at a time. As you're seeing, my linear drawing wasn't perfect, so I do uh, some edits to the lines as I go in with color. I tend to try to draw as much as I can. I try to get enough information so that when I go into color, I'm able to uh, make more corrections. So now you're seeing more of the glow starting to happen with the the shape between the neck and the hand. There's more of a nice uh, orangey kind of scarlet color that I'm using there. And the shoulder plane area around the... Uh, around the arms is more neutral. So a lot of viridian goes into that, a lot of viridian uh, mixed in with yellow ochre. Uh, but a lot of this is mixing, mixing as you go. Mixing as you go means that you don't work with a set of predefined pre-mixtures like you would if you're trying to do an old master study. This is more of an impressionist type way of approaching it, one spot at a time. Now even though I am working with all of these colors, once again, take note that the value of the background is very light, it's very bright in comparison to the skin tones. Now you see I'm actually making a change to the drawing. I found that I had the elbow a little bit, uh, a little far, 
So I'm trying to consider making edits to it. As you see, it was raised slightly. So now we put in the clothing, and now we're going to go and put drapery. So the model is wearing a black tank top and white shorts, but the white shorts have a cloth over them. Which, by the way, I should mention that the photo reference was taken from Unsplash, a copyright-free reference, uh, a copyright-free site. So if you want to see the original photo reference, which the painting doesn't really look much like the photo reference as I try to make edits as much as I possibly can so I don't perfectly recreate a photograph. But in any case, the link to that is also going to be in the description box of this video. Now one of the most fun parts is trying to paint all of those colorful reflections because it is white drapery in a sunset. And it doesn't get as com it doesn't really get as complex as that. Nothing really in all of painting can be as complex as sunlight and a, uh, a natural uh, light fabric. So you're going to see a lot of push and pull between warm colors, cool colors, orangey colors, blue colors, purple colors, scarlet colors. So pretty much a wide array of different colors. So I'm going in, going strong with those lights. So you're seeing I'm pushing very, very bright saturated lights for the sunset as it should be because sunlight is practically impossible to capture with oil paint so what you have to do is consolidate and relate your colors to one another so that you don't max out uh, in your saturation range so you need to surround your brighter colors with more neutral colors Now it's just developing one little section at a time. For the bright blues, I used a lot of phthalo turquoise for the bright blue colors, cadmium orange for the bright orangey colors, and orange molybdate, which is a rublev color for the fiery reddish colors. But it's important also not to forget the value range and the drawing itself. And it's also important that the values, though as colorful as the shapes may be, that the values stick within their defined families, meaning that none of the values in the drapery interrupts any of the values in the background, meaning I don't want any of the lights in the drapery to be confused with the bright lights emerging from the background. However, I do want that shimmering light effect to shine behind the drapery. And now you're seeing some of the mountains starting to go into the composition. Like I said, this painting is about two weeks worth of work in a little 12 by 16 inch canvas. So each section of the painting is very uh, carefully studied. The backgrounds of the mountains, you must think about atmospheric perspective. As things get further away, they appear to be more blue, but also they appear to be lighter. So everything in the background has to be cooler than everything in the foreground. It also has to be darker, yet not as dark as the darkest areas of the um, of the portrait, yet they could match some of the skin tones in terms of value. It's a little tricky that way. And at this point, I'm going to use some of the light of the background to help me out with the silhouette of the mountains. Switching to a bristle brush. This is a size 2 filbert bristle brush from the silver brush brand. Now you see a lot more colors have been blocked into the background. It's a combination of reddish fiery colors, bright blue colors, 
yellowish colors, all harmonizing with this sunset. Remember, the impact that this painting is supposed to have is in the effect of the light, the, uh, the strength of the light, the light being inspirational as this painting is aiming to capture the moment of which you find your calling. That's why it's titled Finding Your Calling. It's supposed to bring enlightenment to that very wonderful moment in life where you discover what it is you want to do. So, that being said, the impact of the light, the quality of the drawing, the uh, gauge of the values, the composition, all of this has to be put into a lot of scrutiny. But it's fun. It's a fun meditative process to work this way. Now some of the distant landscape is just going to be a bunch of blurred brush strokes pushing towards a cooler purpley range. Now we're starting to block in some of the rocks, those rocky texture. Notice the difference between the valley range of the rocks and the valley range of the distant mountains along with the colors. Now at this point in the picture, a couple days have already gone past. So when you work with materials like the ones that I'm working with, with lead white in particular, the paint does tend to dry overnight. So I do have the speed of the drying without having to use alkyd oil paints. However, had I used titanium white, it would have slowed down the drying rate. So one of the secrets to working on a painting multiple days at a time is knowing the drying rate of your paints and also leaving some areas uh, to be done in wet on wet technique, like these rocks. Or just putting in some texture for the rocks. However, there, is, there isn't the heavy use of impasto in this painting. Some areas around the face, the shoulder, and the rocks have thicker paint, but overall the handling of this painting is kind of medium to low texture. Now you're seeing some details in the highlights of the rocks. These are really fun moments in the painting. And you see also some refinement in the drapery. Some of the most complex color relationships go into the drapery, the white drapery and the light. But you can see how it's definitely started glowing now. So with a small brush, one little plane at a time, we're adding even more texture. Now it's important to note at this point in the painting that not all of the shapes are developed at the same degree of specificity. So not everything is going to be as rendered as the drapery. The drapery is probably one of the most rendered spots on the painting. The face is probably the most developed spot on the painting. The mountains are left kind of like a whisper, an impression. The rocks have more texture and more detail, should I say, than the mountains do, but the, but the rocks don't have anywhere near as much specificity as the drapery. So you need to play this game with composition, not to describe everything with the same amount of specificity, but to describe the way that you want the viewer's eyes to travel around the composition. Many, many Rembrandt master studies have been done to obtain this kind of way of painting. 
Now I'm thankful for all of the teachers that I've had in the past and all of the lessons that I've learned. However, the biggest lessons that I've learned have been from the master studies that I've done. And you've seen many of them on this YouTube channel. But now you're seeing the master study information being transferred into uh, an actual studio painting that I would feel comfortable submitting into art competitions, galleries, and all kinds of um, you know, artist career type activities. Now it's important to find those simple moments of light, making sure that the highlights are not always the same color. The highlights cannot just be simply predictable. Some are warm, some are cool, some are a lavenderish color, others are a scarlet type color. Now you're seeing we were able to obtain sort of an effect of distance. You're seeing some of the rocky textures in the background fade in the heat of the reflection from the uh, dirt bouncing back into the rock. Make sure that the reflections that you paint are not the same color as the objects that are essentially uh, being reflected. Make sure that you study those color relationships very carefully. Now obviously working from a photo reference like I am, these all have to be made up. So this is a, mostly from imagination uh, where these color relationships are coming from. But a lot of this comes from studying uh, painting from life. And now some nice and fun details in the distant mountains. These are going to be some of the most uh, fun video clips to see. And you see a nice bright blue color, bright blue uh, highlight, contrasting those bright orangey colors. This is also a technique known as broken color in Impressionism, where you have the same value range, but you alter the colors in that given plane, which enhances the effect of light. This is something that you would almost never see in a photograph. little distant objects in the background. Just little whispers of detail. Remember, not everything should have the same amount of detail. Now we're just going to do a few final touches to the silhouette, but you can see the light, the glow, uh, really starting to take effect here. And with that being said, I really hope that you enjoyed this YouTube video. And if you want to take your education with me further, please check out my online classes, which are uh, listed in the description box down below. Also, in addition to that, if you are interested in owning this painting. This painting will be available for purchase. Please see the description box of this video. Once again, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.